Hi, welcome back. This week I have a short essay I'd like you to read that was written by a vice president at Nike Shoes. His name is Howard White. Howard was a pretty well-known basketball player back in the 1970s, playing for the University of Maryland. He was definitely on his way to a professional career in basketball, but some knee injuries pretty much ended his chance to be an NBA player. So after college, he did some coaching and then later got a job with Nike as a sales rep. While he was at Nike, he became friends with Michael Jordan, who many people think is the greatest basketball player of all time. Now the thing that Howard White is best known for as a businessman is getting superstar players like Michael Jordan to sign on with Nike and then allow their names and faces to be part of Nike's advertising campaigns. And in the case of Michael Jordan, this resulted in Nike creating an entirely new brand of shoes and clothing called Air Jordan, which generated more than $200 million a year. So this was a big deal for Nike, and the man behind it all was Howard White. Now getting back to this week's assignment, the reason I picked the Howard White essay is that it's a good example of the type of story you often hear from very successful and powerful people who attribute much of their success to simple little lessons they learned as a child. Now these stories always surprise me because I think most of us assume that success comes from all of our work as an adult going to college, working 80 hours a week at a job, making sacrifices to create a better life for our families. And maybe all those things do play a part. But when I hear successful people talk about the things that made them the people they are today, more often than not, they're talking about much smaller things. Something a grandmother told them when they were five years old or something they learned from a grade school teacher. In Howard White's story, this pivotal moment in his life happened at age 10. It was a small lesson that his mother taught him, something that stuck with him for the rest of his life, and something to which he attributes much of his success in business and his work at Nike. So give the essay a read and let me know what you think. In your response, try to recall an experience from your own childhood that you think still influences your life today. This week we're going to learn how to write a paragraph that includes a process. Now there are a lot of different names for this type of writing. Some textbooks might use words like process or procedure or instructions, and there are even a few variations of those terms that you might see from time to time. Words like directional process or informational process or process explanation and process analysis. Try not to get too hung up on the terminology here. The idea is much simpler than it sounds. Just keep in mind that a process paragraph can do two things. One, tell a reader how to do something. Or two, tell a reader how something works. Now these two types of paragraphs have a lot of similarities. For example, they both describe a sequence of events over time. However, they also have some very important differences. The how to do something paragraph usually includes a sequence of step-by-step -step instructions which are written in such a way that they speak directly to the reader. In grammatical terms, that's called writing in second person. Writing in second person means you often start sentences with the word you, which does a nice job of quickly directing the reader's attention to what the author is saying. This can be important, especially if the author is explaining something critical or giving important instructions. For example, you must remove the safety rod before starting the motor. The word you shows that this sentence is written in second person. Now something you'll often see in this type of writing is that the author will remove the subject, in this case the word you, and simply start the sentence with the instruction or the command itself. Remove the safety rod before starting the motor. In grammatical terms, this is called writing in the imperative mood, which is just a fancy way of saying that an author implies a subject without having to actually include the word in the sentence. The worksheet I've provided for this assignment will give you a chance to practice writing a process and help you understand the difference between telling a reader how to do something and telling a reader how something works. The writing workshop for this week is all about writing from different points of view. First person, second person, third person. 
This assignment is closely related to the paragraph exercise also in this module since point of view plays an important role in writing a process paragraph. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you like the Howard White essay, and I hope you can recall some of your own childhood experiences that have made a lasting impact on how you see the world today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.